Uh, right. The reason I just wanted to hop back over here was because I, I pulled up the Euro Aussie very quickly earlier on, and it's it's um, I mentioned earlier about this rotation where um, as we you know you had a nice move in one session with a pair and then you move into another session and uh, and you know you think the reversal is coming after that nice move and in fact it's nothing seems to be happening and the other reason for moving over to look at the ninja trader version of uh, of the CSI is with ninja trader uh, the time stamp at the bottom is so much easier to read on the, on MT45 i think we're going to have to come up with some kind of indicator because yeah. i it's it's just a pain um as you know we with MT4 and 5, your, the timestamp on the chart will either be your broker, uh, given by the broker, or by MetaQuotes. And it's you have to either take off two hours, add on two hours. It's a real, basically, it's a real pain. Anyway, uh, Ninja Trader, you, you are in real time, as it were. And I just want to highlight, this was the release of the news, at, I think it was about 2 to 30 hour time to do with the Chinese CPI. And we can see the blue line here, which is the Aussie. That had been rising sort of quite nicely. It then actually started to roll over just before the, uh, just before the news. And then the, it had an acceleration um, uh, on after the release. But I just want to have a look at the, at the this is the euro. And we can see here that, that was falling. And then you had this divergence. And this divergence is what we saw on the charts that I was showing you. So let me just take that down a second. So that's what we were looking at. Let's pull that away. Euro Aussie, here we are. Let's try and find that, that particular uh, uh, move coming into the uh, the uh, the release off the release itself which caused the volatility that we can see here even on the 10 minute chart this is our and as i said it's so much easier with ninja because you can see the timestamp at the bottom this was the it, as always you know with fundamental news it, you'll often find um, the maybe there's been some leak of the news, which is why the market will suddenly start uh, start moving. And we can see here there was quite a dramatic move high and it was all on volatility. There was volatility candle. You had uh, one, two. Uh, that wasn't a volatility. That was the volatility there. A lot of volume un underneath it with volatility. You know, to see such a sequence of, uh, of candles, it is possible. It's not no, but it's not the norm. You tend to have either one and, and then two. What of, oh, always happens with volatility, as we can see here, you have the volatility. This indicator triggers in real time. When the next candle forms, as you can see, here, it goes back to within the spread of the candle. And as David said, if you're in a trade, then, you know, do you, the, uh, oftentimes it's easy to say, that's it, I'm out. Now, what happens is, it back into the spread of the candle, or then it carried on higher. Same thing happened. This candle back into the spread of the candle again. Then it carried on. Then it hit the the volume point of control, which is you know a strong uh, area of resistance. Then we had the final uh, volatility candle again. Uh, um, um, volatility triggered, and again within the spread. But by this time. The, the you know the move had come to a point of exhaustion there is a there is a strong level of volume based uh, resistance up here we talk about support and resistance we have price based support and resistance which are these indicators here here we have volume uh, based support and resistance and in fact that final uh, uh, after that final candle the retreat to within the spread of the candle then that kind of you know it was coming to an end and then we went into a period quite a long period of sideways congestion before we had the reversal here well we here we have all the candles we have the quite a lot of volume for asia uh, as uh, we can see under here um there's there's no firm direction so we are waiting for the reversal now how can we how can how, how do we know at what point you know in terms of how can we validate that support and resistance we can see that support and resistance in terms of volume resistance or uh, price based resistance and this is where personally and i encourage those of you who are in the program and who have the the full uh, package indicator is to look at the camarilla indicator and this is where i have it here on the chart and this is replicating 
that piece of price action just with the uh, the candles with the volatility indicator the volume indicator and the camarilla why did when the price arrived at where it did where it had the volume resistance why did it suddenly appear to stop dead and one of the reasons is because it hit this r4 in on the camarilla protocol most uh traders use Camarilla and they use four levels and the fourth level has always been one which is considered that if there's a breakthrough it is a valid break through it and you know so the price will run doesn't always happen uh, you do need volume to help you uh, validate that as well but it's just one more piece as I say, don't piece of the jigsaw to tell us why it, we had this sort of stop at this level. It hit the R4. It never really managed to get through. It went, it carried on and on, and then it reversed lower. And in fact, that this reversal lower on the Euro Aussie was also captured on uh, uh, on the faster time frames of the CSI. I can't pull it up now uh, because you know the the, the indicator doesn't uh, hasn't got enough of a look back period to to highlight that, and it would also also have been on the matrix. So that is another reason why that uh, uh, this pair actually stopped where it is. We had. From the volatility perspective, we know we, were, we would expect a reversal after such a strong move after the, the momentum. But this is actually, you know, this is like a, you know, this is like a dead stop because this is such an important level. I have to say, some traders use Fibonacci. That's why they use these, uh, these, uh, these methods, if you like, of trying to give the support and resistance a degree of hierarchy. R4, S4 are important we've gone one step one step further and added two more levels to the camarilla there's the r5 and the r6 and they really do help in uh helping us to establish whether the reversal we're seeing at the moment is as i said it's going to be likely valid or not but as always we need to see that in multiple time frames so if we move over to the hourly chart what happened here well, it did actually get to not such a hugely important level, which is actually the R1, R2, which is the R3. So that also stopped at a significant level on uh, the And in fact, the most important element of this chart is on the hourly chart. When we talk about uh, using maybe the slower time frames where you don't want to um, sit through the noise, if you like, that you get on a slower time frame chart, at what point... Uh, we saw the, all the price going through the, the volatility candles on the 10 minute chart. When we came to the hourly chart, now this indicator triggers in real time. So, uh, you know, at some point in the formation of that candle, th the volatility trigger, uh, you know, these two um, arrows, these two triangles would have been triggered. So we know we have a volatility candle on the slower time frame. It did actually, and, and what I'm trying to say is, because it triggered in the slower time frame, it gives even more validity to the fact that at some point, this move is going to come to a stop. On the 10 minute chart, it stopped at the R4, and then it actually hit another level on the 60 minute. Not such a key level, if you like, but it's still a level. So you had volatility, you had uh, important levels, you had uh, you had the momentum draining out of, of the move. Then you had the potential for the reversal setup, if you like, in this particular pair. I just want to bring up the 60 minute chart. So we have a look and see what we're looking there up there as well. Let's have a look. Uh, where are we? Yes, here we are. We actually hit, as I said, we've got this uh, level here. Let me just put some more data on here. More days. Let's put 30 days instead of 10. Just fills out the gap over there. Let's have a look and see where we are. Well, we were we were looking at a, a at a volume uh, resistance up here as well. This is the the candle, but because it coincided with what we saw in the 10 minute with volatility, the levels that we saw in the multiple time frames plus the other indicators would that have, would that have been a potential reversal? Yes, why not? Uh, but you know, it's but with after volatility, you also have to expect, as David said, with reversals, they're not, you know, they're not V-shaped. They don't go from primary to back to primary. You do get a period of 
congestion. So, you know, do you enter at that point? Where do you enter? That's very much a a a, a, a very you, there's no clear cut answer to that. Um, we're not going to do it th uh, this time. Next time, we're going to look at reversals using non-time based charts because otherwise it would be too much to cover. What I wanted to cover is, if you like, the concepts and the principles behind reversals. But next time, we will look at perhaps using, well, not perhaps, we will be using non-time based charts to help us with our entries and obviously with our exits. Now, with this particular move at the moment, that would have been the reversal. And this is over, you know, this is this is two hours here. This is a long, you know, this is a long time for uh, certainly a short-term trader but it did actually carry through and where did it go it actually stopped at the volume point of control on the 60 minute let's have a look at where does that where are we in terms of levels here um it was kind of trading around the r2 the next significant level for this is down at the r1 which is where the start of the this is the move at just over 66 for 66 45 if we look at the 10 minute let's see what that's telling us and by the way these levels that we have they are um, they are um, they are recalculated. The the levels up to and not including the hour are recalculated on a uh, on a daily on a 24 hour basis. But the, uh, the 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 slower time frames they stay there for the next for the whole of this week, which is why you will get different levels in different time frames. That's it. That's what I'm going to say on that. Can I move back to you now? Is that okay? And 